Welcome to another edition of the Owner's Box. I'm Billy Koch, alongside of Michelle Yu. That way, I'm not sure, I, I still can't figure this out, but uh, uh, I am the founder and managing partner of the Little Red Feather Racing Club. Michelle Yu is the do-all, do-anything in sports uh, and horse racing, and she's amazing, and I'm so glad she's here. And you look all bundled up on this kind of chilly, rainy day here in Southern California. What's happening? I actually, I don't mind chilly rainy days because sweater weather is kind of my jam. I am wearing yeah. sweatpants, though. Like, I'm doing my Wait, shirt. I don't think I can get my leg up. I'm wearing, <laughs> okay, there are my sweatpants. Yeah. All right, what kind of yeah. slippers are you wearing? I wear these, Um, I think they're called Olakai. And oh, they have okay. like a little fur. I wear and these then... legit every day. Wait, like, wait, wait. So like the back you step down, though? Yeah, it's supposed to. Look, it oh, has a little thing. it's supposed to. Yeah, like oh, it, you can wear it like fine. that, or you just go like that. So it like, and mine's like, you can tell how much I wear it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like it. I, well, I went out this morning and we had to do stalls and we were moving babies in and stuff. And it was, I mean, pardon my French, it was pissing rain. It was, so, I, oh, it I was, couldn't believe how wet it was. Oh my God, last night, you know, I have my puppies for whatever reason now they've run this habit that they want to wake up at 1 30 in the morning. Mm. And they hate have you had their rain. prostates checked? I don't know. And they hate the rain and they would like go out and then run back and go out and run back yeah. and they wouldn't go to the bathroom. So then it happened again at like three. It was, it, it was just a horrible night. I'm tired. My old dog does that. And I have to close all the doors in my house because uh, if you don't get up and make him go out, then he will like pee in my dressing room. And I'm like, no, 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 dude. Yeah. It's bad news. Well, you look great. What's uh, we have a great guest today. It's going to be price <laughs> bell. Who's a good man. We're going to talk about uh mill Ridge. We're going to talk about his, ascendancy into prominence as well as what are the what are we talking light about up racing is light up racing that's right that he is a part of and i've only kind of just seen it in passing online so i'd love to just hear more about it but basically it is supposed to just get people involved which is obviously what we're all about um right. especially a younger generation so i can't wait to hear from price you you've it's scratched the surface you've scratched the surface Yes. I'm like, here's the name of what it is. We'll find out more. I have bad news. I looked at this whole part today and I felt really old. Like my like my neck's getting oh. old. Yeah. You look you how you're just do you put stuff on that? No. No. It looks it looks good. It's very well, you're Washa. also much younger than I am. Washa. Uh barely. It's, Washa. it's where you use this like piece of jade and like you put oil on your face and you like oh. do this and it like cleans out your like lymphatic I, system and it makes your jawline, your jawline is incredible it's not Fine. usually it's just i'm gua shawing and it makes a difference I even shade. oh all right let's go three things to <laughs> no one wants to hear this stuff <laughs> they no. do uh okay you ready for three yeah. things of note yes. okay uh, so the first thing of note was this weekend, it was pretty big. It was the Pegasus World Cup. Yes. And Pegasus. I know a lot of people were just kind of like hating on the overall assembled field. But in the beginning of the year, when a lot of horses have gone to stud, you kind of have to see what's left, right? And this is our leaping off point. We've got three big multi-million dollar races, the Pegasus Cup, the Saudi Cup, the Dubai World Cup. Um, and we can kind of see what we've got going on. So the Pegasus did go to National Treasure, but huge run from senior Buscador. Um, I thought it was, I still thought it was a pretty good race. And it had, they had a good race, right? on crown. National Treasure was incredible. Uh, he was incredible in the Preakness last year. He's our Preakness mm -hmm. winner. He was incredible the other day. Kudos to uh, Team SF and Starlight and Madikit and Flavian Pratt and ba Bob Baffert for having that horse. I, they went so fast early. I was shocked when he was able to hold on, especially with Senor Buscador making that big, big run. Um, and uh, I know there's Saudi talk for National Treasure. Have you heard anything on that regards? That is what I've seen, and I think he's going to go straight from Florida. So the, the California flight goes from California, lays up in Florida, and then carries on. So he's already there. So as far as I know, he's staying there and just going to hop the plane over. Fantastic. Good work, every Good work by National Treasure. Has a chance to uh, to be a very, very important horse. Look, everyone that wanted to like go National Treasure and like kind of poo-poo him a little bit, like you said, he won the Preakness. He you also, were always a big fan of I was, National Yeah, Treasure. I've been a huge, yeah, I've been a bandwagon yeah. horse and since he was, he was two. When he debuted, or when he, I don't know if he won his debut or second race or whatever, I remember Baffert saying that was one of his best two-year-olds. Yeah. 
Well, look at um, they can look at the rest of the field, right? Archangel's retired, right? Mage won the Derby, never won again. I mean, there's all these horses that, like, when you yeah. look at the field of like the Derby, and you're like, meh, it's a bunch of like you meh. know lackluster Hello. horses. Like overall, meh. he's the one that came back to win, you know, yeah. another uh, another big race, and he ran second in the Breeders' Cup to Horse of the Year. Yeah, meh, meh. Uh, right? All right, Texas Day horses, was good. How many hey. horses can you name me from the Derby field last year? I probably not many. Like just on the spot without looking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not many. <laughs> Honestly, I can't right now. Like also, I'm also I'm on like two hours sleep, so I'm not really uh, focused. Okay, um, Michelle, uh, my... I know you're going to talk about other races on that day, but yeah. how was the atmosphere? Because there's a lot of stuff going on on social media about social media influencers. I don't really, to be honest with you, understand the arguments. What What are people upset about? I, okay, so I, first of all, obviously, you guys know I use my Alex Earl light. I'm a huge Alex Earl fan. In fact, last Pegasus, she was I on Hard she Knock. Was she was what? She was, she's the girlfriend, I think, of Braxton Berrios, yes. who played yes. for the Dolphins. Yes, yes. yes. Braxton Berrios' girlfriend. Yes. But, yes. like, she dated, like, a, a, a baseball player before that. But like, so what's I, wrong with her? Why are people up in arms? I don't get it. She doesn't know about horse racing. That's what. That's what. That's why people are like, how come you can't? pay the fan to be this or how come you can't pay a big gambler because like i don't want to hate on gamblers but gamblers don't generally have six million followers or right? look, well, let's be honest or look She's like hot. Hot. Or, hot. yes she is i mean when She's she came, on, we were all in the suite and when she came oh god seriously i'm gonna go over for the misogynistic uh approach here but uh when she came on the tv the whole suite like went whoa hey whoa what's yeah. happening <laughs> well, like... and if you like now i've been a big follow of her for ages last year i called Pete Rotundo. i'm like hey we got to get alex earl at the pegasus and he's like who's oh, that so that was your and idea she, yeah last year it was so like mm -hmm. last year we actually had her at pegasus but she didn't do like nbc because she wasn't she only had like a couple hundred thousand followers right. last year right um but she's actually been like super open <laughs> about like her boob job and following that along and she has terrible terrible like acne and oh. she like turns off her filters and shows like how bad her skin can be. And then like oh. when she's on Accutane, how good it looks. She's so like she's real... actually, yeah. she actually like helps people that have like self-confidence issues. Like look, like if you, like you see her like five years ago, you'd be like, no. Right. Like, and then what is crazy. the problem with, with Dave Portnoy? Like people just don't like Dave, like because of the barstool thing. And like, cause he loves I, it. He's an owner. I, I think I we know. get him on the show. Sure, get him on the show. I honestly don't know a lot about him and why there's hate around him. I mean, he's also he's not a young hot chick, but like yeah, but he you does know. the pizza reviews and he does, you know, his bar stool is huge and and you know, he's, I know he's good friends with Bradley Weisbord and I know he owns a really nice Philly and he bets they have a whole consortium yeah. and everything. So I, I well, think so then he would if they if they gave him if they give him the two minutes of fame and put him in a room, they'd be like, Oh, he's already famous. He doesn't need like people just want to hate who are on the everything. People that are complaining is my question. That's what I don't understand. The people complaining is like horse racing Twitter who only want I don't know. I don't know what they want. I don't know. Yeah. And I don't uh, I don't want to like hate on them because like I think, I I think globally too. here's my here's my 30,000 foot view on that is like we need all the help we can get right now mm -hmm. to try to grow the game. Whether you believe it's the right way or the wrong way, it's still an attempt to grow the game. It's still an attempt to bring new fans. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter if Pegasus people aren't you know, betting ten thousand dollars while they're there. They're they're being introduced to horse racing. It's it's like it's not it's it's like any other business. You know, there's a lot of times where I bring people to the racetrack and they don't necessarily invest with little red feather, but you know what? They're there and who knows what's gonna happen down the line? Who knows what's gonna happen three years from now when all of a sudden they go, Oh my god, we had that great time at the track. I really wanted to be in a horse. What was that guy's name? Oh yeah, Billy. Right. All those things matter, and that's what I don't get. Like well, anything we do. To get eyes on our sport in a positive light, not a negative light. Let me repeat that. A positive light we should do, period, end of story. Well, that's, I think the people are just mad because they're like, gamblers are there through thick and thin, and we don't get free anything. And you're going to bring that's in a girl that's anything. never what seen a horse race before. Yeah, all right. And pay her to be there, right? When, they, when everyone else had to fork out a couple hundred bucks to be there. But, like, that's the price you pay to have someone – with a lot of followers or a lot of interest, you know, 6 million right. eyeballs being to the, the right. one horse race that she was promoting is big. It's even if, 
even if they didn't bet, they might come and when they're there, they're betting. Believe me, yeah. I was in the carousel club helping people bet. They didn't know nothing. He yeah. One guy just gave me, he's like $1,000. I'm like, what do you want me to do with it? And he's like, bet it on the longest shot on the board. I'm like, how do we, nice. how is the can win? Wait a second. He was like, no, <laughs> I only, big, go big or go home. And he's just pumping money through the machine. That's machines, awesome. Right? Like, yeah, they just want to play and they just want to have fun. And like, that's it. Some people have disposable income like that. Yep. Some people don't, but like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Wait, if you had you are, money, come back I again. Yeah. I, I have no point. Wait, wait. Um, there were, I know there were some other big races. I don't know if you're going to get to those. I know we have to get to Price Bell in like five minutes. So, is there something? I, so that you I sent talk? him a link, so he'll. We'll see when he pops up, okay. so we can talk. That's how this up. works. Okay. Um, so the, the the Pegasus undercard obviously had the Philly and Mare Pegasus race, and then it had the Boys Pegasus race, which was also won by a mare. Um, yeah, and there we know awesome there are a bevy heart. of stakes underneath, but the, the warm heart thing was insane. Ooh. How good is Ryan Moore? I mean, come on, come okay. But on. here's the thing here's the thing I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot a hole in that. You okay. ready? You're gonna say you're on the best horse, you can do anything. No, I'm not gonna say that. I'm like, we already know how good Ryan Moore is. Look, why are we all of a sudden surprised <laughs> that he gave her that beautiful ride? And I don't think that it's surprised. That no, did not surprise me. No one here goes through on rails. They're always That's like, I'm going to go so wide. If an American-based rider was like, I'm on the best horse, they would not think, mm, there might be traffic. I don't want to go through there. I'm just going to go around where, there's, where there's, it's going to be clear no matter what. And he Frankie was like. Frankie does it all the time. I disagree. Frankie does it all the time. Pratt does it all the time. The, the best do it. And Ryan Moore is one of the best. So that did not surprise me. But you know what did surprise me? Hmm. Victor Espinoza aboard Shamu. Well, that that's my next thing right here. It says Shamu. It even says <laughs> Shamu. Shamu. Okay. It Shamu. says Shamu. How great was that? Oh, well, you weren't even there, were you? I oh, because you were there. in Pegasus. Mm -hmm. Did you get to watch the race live at all? So what we're talking mm -hmm. about is New Grange, who uh, who was a really good three year old, went oh, through the Price sale. Just jumped in. Well, I'm gonna let Price oh. in, and he's gonna. I'm gonna let Price in. He listen to our talk about. Okay, New Grange. then we'll get to, get to him. So there he is. Price. Hey, pal. Welcome to the show. One second. Let's Billy is regaling us with uh, New with Grange. New Grange info. No, we're going to get the price. That was the second second straight win in the San Pasqual. Uh, it was his second win in a row after the San Antonio. Now you say he, look, he's Dubai bound. But he may run in the Santa Anita Handicap. March 2nd. Really? Before okay. Dubai. Yeah. So, how did, yes, it's not official. So that's why we're skipping Saudi, is we're thinking yes. big cap Dubai. Yes. He loves San Anita. He's uh, like, I think he's five for seven their lifetime. And it's a grade one. It's 400,000. Is the big cap still the big cap? You know, maybe not, but it's still an important race. It's a grade one. It would be nice for his resume. He'd be one of the favorites there. So that's might be where we're pointing New Grange. Price, what's happening? All's good, baby. You look good. I love your backdrop, you? Billy. That's this what I said. Library. I was like, where are you? It I'm smells of rich I'll, mahogany. And like, are you sitting on a leather sofa? I am not. I am sitting. <laughs> you have a whiskey have a and a cigar next to you. All right, let's see. We have we have bunk beds. This is our little <laughs> guest house. This is the Kathy Kaler special. Look at the fireplace. Nice. Oh, it's yeah. so cute. Nice. Yeah, it's really cool. So this is my new podcasting location. Uh, where are you, Price? Are you in Kentucky? I am in Kentucky. I'm in Kentucky. I'm in. Uh, I'm at, the, at our office at Mill Ridge, um, oh. which actually was originally was built as my grandmother's office. So I have a great, you know, privilege. To, oh, that's awesome! To, How uh, is the weather? Is it still freezing cold or? No, man, it's actually glorious today. Today's oh, a glorious day in Kentucky. It's like nice and sunny. Um, it's probably 45 degrees or so. Um, nice. So, I will let you know. Yeah. My new thing is um, is golf. I'm really late to the party, like super late. It's taken me 54 years, in fact, to get there. But my son started playing. So now yeah. I'm kind of getting into it. And I'm definitely bringing my sticks to, to Lexington when I come in. So if that might nice. interest you. You're, uh, I'm not a golfer, but I play hmm. frisbee golf with your next door neighbor. Um, oh, with Ben? Yeah. You Oh, he is, he's, the, he's the greatest. I mean, frisbee he golf, is. his hikes. Do you go on those crazy hikes and retreats with him? You know, we have... I, I I've not, but I would like to. We have this <laughs> key differentiator. Oh, we have a key differentiator that's children. Um, yes, which like true. um and and flexibility of schedule. But uh, yeah, I understand. No, it's awesome. And, like the one that he and Rob do after September. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean you got to be in shape. 
I mean, ben is- all right. Well, let's let's. We have so much to talk about, and we want to talk about. I keep forgetting the name of the thing, Michelle. Light up, uh, light up racing. Light up racing. I want to get to light up racing for sure. I want to know all about that. I want to introduce it to a lot of people. Before we do that, awesome. tell people just a little bit about yourself and Mill Ridge, and and you know, give us the the twenty four sure. cent version of the history of Price Bell and where you are now. Wow. I, I normally can only do a nickel tour, so you know, that's fine. 20, nickel twenty four cent yeah. like makes it feel like you know extreme. Um, yeah, so I am born uh, and raised here in Lexington. Um, and I, uh, you know, I, I left, I left Lexington when I was 13. I went to boarding school in Connecticut. Um, Why were you sent to boarding next... school? That's a great question. I, it's very, so it's very European though, right? Like it's a, it's a positive in Europe and over here it's a threat. It's yeah. a, it's a, yeah, it's a curiosity. I mean, I was so naive. I thought everyone went to boarding school. So both of my parents had gone to boarding school. My mom was from Eastern Kentucky and okay. like her, parents like really thought that boarding school was like the way out of Eastern Kentucky. And so that's like, so she went to boarding school and then my dad had gone to boarding school with all of his brothers. Um, so that's just what I thought. So I, away I went. And so uh, I went to school in the Northeast, which was fascinating. You know, and as my dad, as we talked about, I was like, you know, you may not meet people in the Northeast otherwise, you know, so like to yeah. go up there and it's a totally different what, culture. Was it more like, was it more like street uh, I mean, uh, school ties or, um the other one where they stand up on the desk uh what's the movie animal house oh dead no, no dead not poets not animal house. Dead poets yeah dead poets dead poets. yes michelle yeah. dead poet society you was a little yeah, bit a little know, probably a little bit more dead poets but like there weren't uniforms but like oh, okay. it was an interesting play like there, i mean there were 550 kids there were 150 kids from inner city like newark trenton etc and then there were 150 international kids and then there were like whatever 200 like you know what wasps you know i mean like you're like typical <laughs> like you know what you would think and so i was kind of i mean as a kid from kentucky i was kind of like an outsider to many of those groups you know because i wasn't like you know that you know you know greenwich kind of like you know greenwich right, but you kid. still but you still brought a lot of horse racing in like because you were probably Absolutely. so like on breeders cup day where you did you do what i did and start your own like bookmaking services and watch <laughs> breeders cup and everybody could bet on it yeah you know i was not that I, I wasn't quite that entrepreneurial but it did because i was up there or i guess innovative maybe would be the, yeah. the same yeah. but like we did cool. I did, I did, you know, we got people in trading horses young, you know, and set up little partnerships to pin hook and things like that. So that's awesome, um, which is great fun. But I got to go to Tisnow's uh, Breeders' Cup. Uh, oh. So, when's you know, it for America? for America? Absolutely. Michelle, get so, it. Michelle, do the call. I can't right now. I'm watching the dead. <laughs> <laughs> right, you um, might have to do the call. Yeah, I mean, I like it's Tisno, it's Saki. Tisno wins it for America. America. Yeah. I think deeper. I like I like when you go deeper, Michelle. But that's yeah. okay. All right. So, well, tell us just a little bit about yeah. the, your so the then, family and what Mill yeah, Ridge is all about. No, I, absolutely. And I, I guess I segue that because I, I don't know. I I take um, I, I'm very thankful for the perspective for my perspective, which I think is hoed through like through your experiences, right? So, like I. Gatewood Bell, who I don't know if you've interviewed him on this, but he's a great friend. And, you know, we grew up together the same age. And, you know, when we were in seventh grade, we asked our parents if we could go to work. And I went to Mill Ridge and he went to John and Bell, you know. And so but both of us were told by our parents that, like, look, work is a privilege. And if you do not, if you don't treat it as a privilege, then you don't have it anymore. And so we both like entered into a workforce or into the workforce at a very young age, but it, that was how it, we entered it was that it was like a true privilege to be and work with people um, who, you know, uh, who were passionate about, you know, whether it be weed eating, you know, whether it be raising horses, whether, whatever it was, but, you know, it was just like a true privilege to kind of like be part of a family operation and then left, I guess, the industry, if you will, going to high school in Connecticut and then going to, uh, college in uh tennessee and then i was dating Montreal? a girl you uh, what's that? Where'd you I, go? I went to vandy in nashville you um, vandy vandy yeah in nashville um and then I, but i was the whole time working with you know horses in the summers i did a summer with clement I, you know i ended up doing a breeding season in australia um and i was dating a girl who was investment banking in charlotte and she was a year older than me away she went to charlotte and you know this was going to be the one as it always is and 
we were really good at long distance and we weren't quite as like copacetic when we were in the same town. Uh, wow. So I found a job in commercial real estate, which I thought was like, I was sold this idea that, um, look, you do property management and leasing, you're a CEO of a $40 million asset and I'll evaluate you on your ability to increase its value. And I was like, well, that sounds really great. Yeah. And so yeah. I did move to Charlotte to do that. Uh, the girl and I stayed together about six weeks while we were in the same town. And then we kind of moved on, but I, it was, uh, it's how it was great. I mean, I truly, it was the best, you know, because now I'm in Charlotte, which is a dynamic place and is like yep. where I had been so laser focused on horses. Now I'm like actually in a different space, but I, but what I learned from working with horses, like treating people kindly, being willing to do work. Like my last day of work in Charlotte, this happened to me twice, a toilet overflowed. And I was like mopping, you know, toilet water. And it happened again when I moved to Nashville and like some power manager at least. He was like, that was my tell, you know. There you um, go. You knew. Yeah. What exactly. drew you back? What drew you back into the into the horses? Uh, you know, there was a stage. So I moved to Nashville and I was really passionate about and I'm very passionate about like neighborhood development, neighborhoods, engagement. And I always felt like um you know, we, my, our family has farmed this land since like the mid 1800s, predominantly cattle, corn, tobacco. And then my grandmother started our farm in 1962. Um, her father uh, was Hal Price Heedley, who was instrumental in the founding of Keeneland. Um, and he uh, she had been in Houston, moved with her family, which was my dad, Heedley. My uh, oh, those are wrong. You, you switching us? Yeah, I'm not I'm sure I'm big, big, but I'm learning how to use this. <laughs> no, you're doing great. All right, so this is all new to us. This whole video thing. This, this is our oh, first it's... year of this. This is only our third podcast with video. So, I, uh, I love it. Michelle's promised the skinny filter, so I'm guessing that happens in like. You look great. Post. Yeah, you look know. great. What are you talking no. about? Wait, I want to go like, back. Tell me, yeah, say yeah. the thing that you said about Keeneland again. So, uh, my great grandfather was named Hal Price Heedley, um, and he was instrumental in the founding of Keeneland in 1936. They opened the doors. Amazing. Um, I, you know, it's it's not. Uh, yes, it is absolutely. Whoa. Good amazing. job, Michelle. Yeah, yes. now he's big. <laughs> we thought maybe when you were talking about stuff, you would be big and then we would come in. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like it. I like yeah. it. Now you're just gone. I, you know. Oh, we're here. Don't you. worry. Cool. Michelle, like get us but, back in. So. In 1936, you think about it, you're in the middle of like, you know, the depression. And what's yes. what's remarkable is the local racetrack had gone out of business in 27. So before the crash or no, 28, I guess the crash is in 29. So the Kentucky Association track actually goes out of business before the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. um, and then they, you know, the breeders of Kentucky or of Lexington area were like, man, this is the center of the breeding industry. We need to create a model racetrack. And so they banded together and how price Heedley and a number of others went around and they raised, I think they need to raise a million dollars. And they went to, um, someone in the Whitney family and they were like, that's mm -hmm. a great idea. You should, I'll give you a million dollars. And they were like, no, it won't work unless many people contribute to this cause. And so they got a thousand dollars from a thousand people instead of getting like, you know, the one. Oh, right. from the maker. That's like a little red feather partnership. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then you spread the buy-in, right? Like, I mean, at the end of the day, you you got more right. advocates. And so, but each, I mean, they went race to race in the beginning and calculated handle to see if they could fund the purses for the next day, you know, wow. to think like what Keeneland is today cool. versus how it was started was that. Well, yeah, you brought my grandmother Gabe. was. He's, he's, like, he's running the place right now, basically. I yeah. Mean, Absolutely. Now, what, what is there? There's a there's a big family tree here because how yeah. what are all the relations? Because you've said a couple of names and I know Gatewood and yeah. you I, I I get lost I get lost yeah. help us. Hold on, I'm gonna write this yeah. down. Yeah, Michelle, make the fa make the yeah. Bell family tree. There's a lot yeah. of stuff. So I, I guess so. There was the Bells of the Bell family came from Pennsylvania. There were two Bell men, Reynolds, which would be my grandfather, and yeah. John Bell, which would be Gatewood's grandfather. They okay. each married Kentucky girls. Um, my grandfather married my, my grandmother, Alice Heedley. They go to Houston and then John Bell marries Jessica Gay, um, who actually, which I, I do love, uh, telling, sharing this part because I love both Brett and Tyler, but they're yes. cousins and they would have met at a family reunion. <laughs> yeah. 
What? No, it's true. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Tyler Taylor and Brett are cousins? That's impossible. Yeah, Tyler Jones. Yeah, they're Tyler yeah, Jones. Tyler Bell. Yeah, she Tyler was Tyler Bell. Bell. She is, I call her Tyler Taylor because sometimes I say her name wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, within, like, yeah, they're both, like, Tyler's and Gaywood's grandmother, Jessica Gay, is a cousin related to uh, Brett's mother's family. Wow. That is this hilarious. is like this would be like Kentucky a uh, version of Dynasty. Exactly. Remember Dynasty? Exactly. Did I outdate? Did I just date myself? No, you're. I remember you're Dynasty. Okay. Are you sure? All right. I know <laughs> Mich- Price. I know how Michelle has questions, and we want to get to this thing you're doing. So yeah, quickly, no, not, that was the shortest family tree ever. I'm only one line in. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Do you want to keep going? Yeah, I Go. mean, so then simply like my grandmother has uh, four children. My aunt Tish is not, you know, active in racing. She has my uncle Mike was a trainer forever. Okay. Um, worked with uh, Frank Whiteley, actually oh, Mike Ruffian, Ruffian exactly. Yeah, and yeah. and so, I mean, and Mike like that. She, he was her groom when she was laid to rest in the wow. Belmont uh, infield. He jumped down into the grave with her to straighten her blanket and halter. So before they- I read oh, that in I, my book, Ruffian. I have the chills. The yeah, no, I mean, he's... Yeah, rough and burning from the start, Jane Schwartz. Oh, man. Yeah, no, and he's as good he's as good a person and, you know, trainer and horseman as exists. And then my uncle Reynolds and my dad are both uh, bloodstock agents and, you know, both run and operated our family farm, Mill Ridge. And then Uh-oh. on the John Bell side, you had Johnny Bell, who was a right. trainer for a number of years. You had Benny Bell, who was uh, started uh, Benny Bell Williams Advertising. Wow. Um, Joe Brown Nicholson, uh, who's a, a good Joe to know. I think that was his tagline for insurance. A good, good man Joe to know. Good Joe yeah. to know. Yeah. What did he, he sell? Up, <laughs> what's that? Sure. He sells he insurance. That tagline? Yeah, I think. I, mean, I think that that was his tagline. I think that that was like in the Blood Wars Forever. It was like it's a, he's a good Joe to know or something like that. That's um, funny. and then Jimmy uh, Gatewood's dad ran. Uh, yeah. John Bell Farm and then yep. Dolphin, and so we had him started. on our pod right before, right, um, right before the Derby uh, when oh, wow. when uh, the big gray horse was in that. No, oh, that little essential quality. Yeah, just no, yeah. That's that, that okay, I feel so good. I know the whole. I'm good now. <laughs> yeah, now you yeah, have really? it. Joe. Now, now you have, have it. it. Now we're at price, and so now we get okay. oh, price. Man. Yeah. Now absolutely. I've gotten the price. So, price. What is your current writ, uh, role at Millridge? Uh, general manager, so would run kind of the day-to-day operations of the farm with the team, with my in- incredible team. And we stretch people who've been here for 40 years and people who've been here for a year. We actually just had a lunch before this for uh, a guy who's been with us 15 years and his family all came to lunch. And in the, I didn't know this in the, I guess in the Mexican culture, your quince, your 15 year mm-hmm. birthday is a big, like, kind of like yes, debutante, I guess. Yeah. What's that? It's a called a quinceanera. It'd be like the equivalent of our sweet 16s in America. Yeah, I, I love that. And my, uh, yeah, so that we, when I learned that, that and Jose, someone had made a joke, like we should make a uh, statue for Jose at being here for 15 years. I was like, well, let's have a party. So anyway, his whole family came. Oh, so that's, oh I, that's awesome. Really and fun. you throw great parties, by the way. Well, I've been to the opening day or the opening day Keeneland party. That is amazing with yeah. those tacos. Are we doing yeah. that again? Yeah, absolutely. It's going to okay. be the 20th though, April 20th. April 20th. Okay. Yes, 20. I know. And if, and by the way, just so everybody knows, if you haven't been to Millridge and, you know, if, listen, with all due respect, it's a big farm, but it's not it, uh, uh, as compared to some of these other it's Goliaths. Not a com- there, commercial, not, yeah, conglomerate. It is so beautiful. The trees, the, 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 it is. I put up a picture Millridge. of it when we were talking about uh, it earlier, but I don't know if oh, it showed did. or not. It didn't work. No, it didn't work. No. It didn't work. All right, Michelle. Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Both. We're very. Look, we're very privileged, and I mean, we're just stewards of those who've come before us, and you know, hope that we can continue on going forward. You know, I do want to add to that. If you guys are in the neighborhood and you don't want to just call Price up on his cell phone like I do, um, you guys are a part of the Bluegrass Tours, right? So people can right. join the tours and come to Mill Ridge. Absolutely. So we started a number of us started a nonprofit called Visit Horse Country or Horse Country Inc. We're almost uh, ten years old. Uh, a great director, Hallie Hardy, who was at Godolphin for a number of years, runs it now. Um, and so we'll, we do tours. We do tours every day. There's a Currently, there are 25 people driving around the farm getting a tour. In fact, we are the number two thing to do uh, on TripAdvisor Traveler Rated Reviews in Lexington. So What's the number um, one? It's got to be Maker's Mark, right? No. So that's, that is in... That's on key. 
It's not in, oh, yeah. it's not in Bart's town. I can't remember what town. Yeah. Laredo. Uh, Maker's Mark's in Laredo. Yeah, that's true. Um, but we'll have, we'll have 8,000 people come through the farm this year. Um, and so we feed, wow. we give them carrots to feed to horses. And that's why we have a carrot on the hat. Um, oh, and is that a carrot? Yeah, yeah, I've been wait. Price I promised me and Keelan would send me that hat. Oh, it's I haven't still sent it. Hasn't been sent to me. Ugh. Wait, Sorry. what's on the back? Is your name on the back or something? Uh -huh. is it yeah, it says Millridge on the back. And it's a carrot. Oh, that's so nice. I love and, it and because that's, it's a carrot. That's the yeah. John Sheriff's hat, right? That he wears every single day of his life. No, he uh, he did. Yeah, he used to wear a Millridge hat uh, right. when Giacomo right. won the Derby. It was that's amazing. Right. I mean, like my grandmother was just such a, you know. She was an incredible person, an incredible like uh, friend of so many. I mean, we had look. I mean, we are we've had the privilege to raise thirty seven Grade One winners since two thousand, um, wow. and we would average less than a hundred foals a year during that time. So wow. you know, that's a that's we're very proud of, and I mean, that's a Big real number. Because of that, it's your land, it's your people who take your horse every day, and it's your incredible clients that give you the privilege to work with their horses. So, so yeah, so John trained Giacomo and Sweet Catamon, you know, Sweet Catamon's always my go-to when people are like, do you know if horses are going to win? And she was like, she just breathed different air from the beginning. Yeah. 2004 no, Lone Star. Hello. Yeah. Oh. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You remember. Your anniversary this year. Yeah. Absolutely. I won't, and I, we were coming down the escalator as Julio Canani was coming back yeah. up. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm sorry, John didn't train. Julio trained Catamine. Yep. Uh, uh, John trained Life is, uh, Life is Sweet. Yes. Um, her full sister. Uh, uh, who Actually, John was the first to introduce me. You were the first to open my eyes on video, right? And that whole program. But then John on YouTube has an incredible, when it, with the Zenyatta craze, he was yeah. doing a lot of videos for YouTube on Zenyatta. And he did one for Life is Sweet. And Life is Sweet used to only eat laying down. So like deep in the oh, like in the gallows of YouTube is a the sweetest video of life is sweet and John would like get her like her own special like feed tub and he'd slide it over to her and she'd be sitting down and she'd eat and he'd be kind of like rubbing on her. That's and like, awesome. So, yeah. Well, that's you know that's like Michelle does that. Ryan Hansen does that for Michelle. Michelle lays down and Ryan pets her and feeds her. <laughs> it's pretty stupid. special. It's pretty special. All right. Uh, Price Bell joining yeah. us. We're going to talk about light up. Yes. Light I want to talk about light up oh. racing. Yeah. Yes. What is this thing? I have no like idea. You don't, like you don't have enough things to do. <laughs> you know, it's a great, it's a great question. And like, so I, I introduced it and tell the story, like um, what was happening in Australia. So Australian racing um, is very similar to America. You got five or seven states been been you can bring ben on to correct me on all my australian racing facts so you know he got me into cricket by the way it's the best isn't it amazing yeah <laughs> it's so good yeah. okay, his sorry. passion for it is so good and yeah, that makes it contagious wild. um but so in in australia they had a lot of uh they had a lot of challenges in public perception right like we can look at australian racing and be like they've got great syndicates they've got great yeah. purses they've got really safe races they have a, they swim on the beach with their horses like it's just amazing um, yeah. but they also had like major anti-racing people who were speaking out, um, passionately against racing. Um, mm -hmm. and that passionate audience, um, was uninformed, you know, and they were uninformed, but it just was like, and there was no one in Australia kind of like re re responding with fact, you know, like, you know, yeah. all horses die on the racetrack. Well, actually, no, they don't. Most horses don't die, you know, et cetera. But the anti-racing people had gotten to the point where they were buying billboards at Melbourne cup. So to put wow. the Melbourne Cup in perspective, it's the race that stops the nation. Like it's a yeah. national holiday across Australia for people to take half day off of work. And in Victoria, people take the whole day off work. And so here you had this national holiday and the anti-racing people were, you know, their their voice was getting louder about the uh, the about the badness of racing. Sure. Um, and all that badness is really not not founded in fact, but in myth and just in like, you know, just in like the scare tactics. A lot of perception. Of a, lot of, a lot of perception. Exactly. Exactly. So this woman, uh, Vicki Leonard, started a, a nonprofit called Kick Up for Racing. And it was to address the anti-racing people to kind of like, you know, to let people know what the facts are, to arm an army of people with the facts, you know, a volunteer army, because at the end of the day, I think. Uh, I'll speak for myself. If you hear something from a number of your friends or peers, it resonates more than if I hear from an institution. Right? Sure. So like, you know, 
Um, am I less likely to smoke a cigarette because the FDA says it I shouldn't, or is it because all these friends have like said, oh, it'll cause lung cancer? I probably, unless you know, my friends, then I, maybe the FDA. Maybe that's a bad example. But I guess my point is that like our, you know, can when when just the jockey club stands up by themselves, or just you know first racing, or just any industry group and says, you know, actually our you know our breakdown rate has gotten to this number per thousand, it can become very muted or because it's not right. amplified by others right. and you don't see it over and over again so kick up, kick up for racing was started to first you know gather the f facts so you know all peer-reviewed scientific data on what is the truth of racing how many breakdowns why horses you know break down on the one stage the other stage is like people are like oh you shouldn't race two-year-olds but in fact you should race two-year-olds like it's better for bone development mm -hmm. yeah so there's just a lot of these perception things that um that we are trying to that they identified and that we are taking that same kind of playbook messaging right? so, we're trying to get our correct truthful messaging out there absolutely I and it. i got it fundamentally it exists like the aap has oh. a lot of this information the grace and jockey Club research you know so we're trying to gather that information we've got an incredible team of veterinarians who are sifting through trying to answer these you know first 12 big questions you know I mean, they're about halfway through so and the where are the stage, 12, did I miss it? You might you cut out for a second. No, no. Did I miss, what are the twelve questions? Or do I don't I don't remember them off the top of my head. Okay. I've been on the in the <laughs> swim lanes. I, that's not my swim lane. That's like okay. a, a Vicky. So we've engaged Vicky to help us kind of bring kick up racing to Australia. So oh, Vicky, I get it. Okay, and she's running with the uh, the Dr. Jeff Berg, Dr. Wayne McElraith, and Emma, whose name I'm. To Good people, forget, but she yep. runs the Gluck Center here in Lexington. So those okay. three are gathering, addressing what has been identified as kind of like our the twelve kind of first questions, and then from there we'll have a website that gathers that information. But most importantly, we'll be, um, you know, we've had four hundred or five hundred people so far sign up for Light Up Racing, and we're going to make a big push of getting people to sign up. Um, so what is signing up? It means it means giving us your email. What will then happen is we're going to have a survey done, a very simple survey. It'll say, what do you what do you like doing with racing? What are you involved in, et cetera? So we can start to figure out who our audience is. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to, you know, we're going to hold a couple of like, um, I wouldn't call them town halls, but like educational events around first, what was happening in Australia and what did kick up do to address it? And then secondly, uh, Vicky has given a number of presentations like how do i talk to my friends about horse racing you know um i think that there was times there are times and have been times where like something happens and your friends are like wow you know this is so terrible and you're like well no it's not because of this and if we aren't armed with the facts and like understanding how to like kind of like as a single unit sing from the same sheet music that'd be the objective so we're going to have these we'll go huh. for it sorry Interesting. No, I, I, I know, Michelle, and I know you have a question, but I'm just kind of thinking out loud here as Price is talking about this. When you talk about these, maybe these in-person events or whatever you were saying, are we inviting the detractors to these events to get messaging? Or are we just inviting kind of horse racing fans that want more information? To maybe not just their... fans, but maybe fans and people on the fence, which are the, the biggest group, right? You're never going to, I feel like we're not going to change the minds of the PETA people. But there's right. a big group of I don't cares. I'm on the fence. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, so I think I don't know. Like, I wouldn't say that our like distribution channel would include like taking out a billboard and being like, hey, sign up and come to this event. But it's like if you're a member of, you know, Toba, NTRA, the, you know, CT, you know, in California, in Florida, in, in mm -hmm. here in Lexington, yeah. there's a bar managers club like, hey. Anyone who is in this industry implying its trade, um, here's an opportunity to learn about how we're out promoting it, how we're out, I say promoting, but like talking about it. Um, yeah, but and it then is the promotion. Second, it's, it's, it's in its way. It's, it's a marketing strategy that is, the interesting thing is that you're not affiliated necessarily with mm -hmm. the racetracks or with the jockey club or with the TOC, you know, you're right. kind of, it's kind of an independent group of horse racing enthusiasts and professionals that want to just spread the word. Is that semi-accurate? Absolutely. Absolutely. And in a way, I think like filling the gaps within each of those spaces, because it's not that, 
it's not that you know they're not trying you know and i don't i'm not here to critique right. that like they're not doing this they're not doing that it's more like it's impossible for an institution i believe to do this effectively you know okay. to like get and just because there's i don't they're doing a lot of other things you know and i think this is a, a very necessary thing to be doing so in my observation another kind of use case that they've had success with in australia is you know they've those that are really passionate about disseminating you know the information just about like engaging with it are all kind of connected on a whatsapp group and vicky oh. had me join this whatsapp group for melbourne cup and i just watched you know it kind of transpire in the conversation that was happening and it was like you know where um you know a horse was pulled up in the melbourne cup i mean there are 40 horses that run and right. it was like where where's that horse oh that horse is trained by I, it may or may not whoever be trained was, by this right. Waller, whoever it was, Tom yeah. Smith, yeah, um, who's actually uh, Gay Waterhouse's uh, grandfather. So it's not Tom <laughs> Smith. <Family Yeah>. tree. <laughs> Joe Jones. How about that? <laughs> so anyway, it's trained by that person. Yeah, it's trained by that person. Oh, you know, so and so works for that person. Let's get a vid, let's get a fit or a photo of the horse picking grass. You know, he just had heat exhaustion. Like he's out. He's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, so like oftentimes right now, like. We all have cameras in our pocket, but also like when they go on the backside, there's no to the general public. They don't know what's happened to them, you know, so right. and it's not something that the Flemington I think there's some race... people who have done that. I've seen like Tom Amos do that on occasion, right. like if a horse gets pulled, like he'll I go try and do that. If someone I like here saying like, oh, I can't find yeah. this horse, you know, I can't find this horse. I'll walk back there. I'll call the trainer and be like, hey, can you just send a picture of this horse? Like a, you know, proof of life. Right. Yeah. Right. We call and, it all the time. Using... Like, and price, we're using kind of social media channels for this kind of Absolutely. amplification. Absolutely. Exactly. Okay. So Michelle's like the one person army, but with this, with this, when we're working well, we'll be able to take Michelle's photo of that horse and we'll be able to push it across more people. Okay. You know I mean, more retweets, more like face, you know, more Facebook, more just like conversation around, oh, here, this horse is very happy afterwards to dispel any myths or, you know, uncertainties about it. And, and you said nonprofit. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, so two things. Oh, I'll jump to one other thing. So like there is a, a, a diva star in Australia named Delta Goodrum. She'd be like Mariah Carey. And so she goes racing and uh, anti-racing people are like, I can't believe you're talking about racing. You know, it's so bad. Right. And right. she reaches out to um, uh, a friend of hers who's in racing. I think it was Vin Cox, who then lets Vicky know that there's chatter going on on Delta's feed about this being bad um yeah. and so the kick-up crew jumped in and was like actually racing doesn't kill people or horses right racing yeah. does this this is the good this is how many this is how many homes yeah. this is what right. all the career etc all these different things That's great. so it actually turns the negative that was just kind of festering unattended mm -hmm. on delta goodrum's you know comment section to a real positive so now mm -hmm. delta's going out to do you know going to a farm and showing like where horses come from as foals and all these different things. And, and it was very real oh to me. Oh my gosh, you an influencer that's actually doing good for we racing. We just talked about that before you jumped on. Yeah. About how people are up in arms about using influencers. Like that's, that's why they're called influencers. Well, absolutely. And, and I also think they oftentimes bring a fresh perspective, you know, sure. like I'm going to racing and I like doing this and I'm going to wear this. And, but well, I feel like we've kind of, we've walked them down a, a plank almost to where if we don't support them, you know, if we, if we don't become a PR opportunity, we are a PR liability, right? Yeah. So if like anti-racing people who are uninformed jump into their comments and give them negative feedback, well, they're not going to do it again. And yeah. so I think that there's just this right. opportunity. And again, it is grassroots. It is like, cause we're all looking at different channels. We're all consuming different content, horse related and non-horse related. Thus, our as we see something or you know retweet it, repost it, what have you, it kind of spreads the truth. Again, it's it has to be based in science. It has to be like it's not. We're yeah. I think it has all to be very factual, or else there's going to be no. Uh, you won't get the critical mass because no one will believe it, right? If it's if one thing is proven false, it 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 ruins the whole thing. On the same on the same token, then like. If there is something that's like negative, we almost have to show it if it's brought up to be like, you know, yeah, like 
I feel like a really good example of that has been Echo Zulu throughout the entire, um, you know, Breeders Cup scenario, right? Where she was injured and they have like followed her and they have kept us updated and she had to be moved to a clinic and, you know, she's still not out of the woods and we're still following her. And like, we're like, look, this is still not like a hundred percent, but like, here she is and here's what yeah. she's doing. I, I feel right. like we still have to update with things like that. Absolutely. And that gets to like educating people, you mm -hmm. know, I think like it's about the education of blood supply to extremities, you know, like, I mean, it's about like, it's, it is about that education is about bringing people in and helping people care. And because I think we, we wake up every day and do whatever we can for horses. I know Michelle does. I know Billy, you do like, and yet I think we constantly are like fighting, questioning, but it's like, no, like we are trying, you know, and we have to like allow ourselves to be vulnerable to, to that. And then like push out like that, like, this is why we believe what we do is right. You know, this is like, yeah. I believe turning horses out at nighttime is the right thing to do so they can run and play. Mm -hmm. right. Does a horse break its leg sometimes in the field? Yes. You know, yes. it happens, right. you know, it, but horses are herd animals, et cetera. So we have to yeah. address these things and be proud of them about why we do them. And if we do them and we're not proud of them, maybe it questions why we do it and we do something different. You know, to great point, and I like the perspective yeah. point. How would this work um, in in face of of tragedy? Let's you know, we had some obviously some terrible breakdowns this summer, um, specifically at Saratoga, and I don't, I don't like to bring it up, but I already get sick to my stomach even yeah. thinking about it. But one of the things that horse racing over the years has not been good at is dealing with these kinds of things from a from a marketing standpoint. And marketing might not be the right word, but when something tragic happens. How do we come together and get behind it? And how does then Light Up Racing fit into that uh, place? Sure. You know, it's a it's a great question, and you know, I I think that it just has to be done the way that we do it with our family. You know, I mean, right? Like, you know, I'm sure that like your family was like, how, how can you do? It? I mean, because yeah, you know, we there's still thousands of other horses that need to be taken care of. You know, like what Mel did the next day, like she still had a barn full of horses. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, and I'm not, I guess that it's like, I, I don't know, I guess that if we do a good enough job showing our empathy or showing our sadness, you know, because it's so hard. Mm -hmm. um, and that in the Mel example, I might think about like, I mean, the way, she, <clears throat> the way Sean Clancy covered it with Brendan Walsh, like I, mm -hmm. his article, I think he actually wanted clips on it was like, so beautiful and breath to, you know, like yeah. just captured like the moment that I felt. So like, again, I'm not the storyteller to tell that story, but I do think that we, you have to recognize, you have to recognize that it hurts and that like, we love these horses and be okay with that. You yep. know? Um, so I guess, I guess my question and then, then is like, cause pro listen, I don't even know how it works. I mean, I guess who had the Naira or if it's first or whoever, wherever something happens, they make a statement and then what could like, uh, light up racing, maybe gets in communicado with them and, and you guys start talking and, Hey, let us do this. We'd like to send this. Is that the kind of, am I imagining this, how it's working the right way? Or I, 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 I just I think so. But I also hope it's more, a little bit more organic in essence, yes. right. You know, it's like this, you know, and maybe I'd use the example and, and that's such an, ex the most important example, but also the hardest, I guess I would use maybe an, an example, like take Derby week, right like Derby week was all about the breakdowns Derby week and the yep. breakdowns became a number instead of just horses. Right. So like maybe yeah. kind of, but the other thing that happened Derby week that got buried was we scratched the Derby favorite that morning, mm -hmm. you know, Forte was scratched that morning, which we yeah. easily forget. And why was he scratched? Well, he had like all horses competing on that day. You have this veterinary scrutiny, you have this, you have this, right. you know? So, yeah. I mean, so instead of it being like, Hey, he was scratched. Oh my gosh. It's like, it's because these protocols and this is what we're seeing and this is helping. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so that. then by telling that piece of the story, when it happens with a Mel, which is an extreme, you hopefully more people understand all the screenings, all that has happened, all that has been done to try and prevent it. Like yep. you're not going to prevent them all. But if we are more unified, like not united, but just do a better job sharing all that goes into it, hopefully we have a better um I don't know. Our voice yep. is more resonant. Oh, I, I get it. I get it. The the one thing I, I know we want to wrap up, but one one thing I think, you know, how are we formed? Are we a nonprofit? I, I think a big customer for, for us as we start is the mid-20-year-old who is thinking about entering the sport. 
you know, someone who's thinking about choosing it as a career path. Um, that's not me. I'm like probably now re not retrainable. Like, you know, yeah. like, I'm like I'm going to be a pasture off track thoroughbred. Like I'm a pasture <laughs> pet. I'm not, I'm certainly not a new vocations candidate. And so, but like, but there are people who are passionate about horses starting their careers. Right. And I believe, and I think we maybe recognize it. They're very under, you know, they feel very voiceless right now. Right. Mm -hmm. Like they're asked to yeah. have their voice represented by this group, that group, et cetera. And so how do we create an organization where their voice, like they're the customer, you know, so yep. at, we are not, we're housed by a community foundation, but we aren't actually incorporated yet because okay. the goal here is to go from now through the triple crown. Right. Mm -hmm. So fun now, educate now. We're going to get through the triple crown. We've got a little bit of a break in July where we're going to learn what worked, what didn't work, where we need to pivot, what we need to do. And then we're going to go press to Breeders' Cup, you know, and then we'll let the dust settle and they'll be like, okay, this needs to be a 501c3. It needs to be a C6. Right. It needs to be whatever it needs to be. It needs to have this a number of elected board members, this number of what have you. Like, and so instead of trying to like in a perfect world, we're going to create a platform and organization that is reactive to what we learn after we launch, as opposed to trying to create the perfect structure and entity. We're going to try and be reactive to what works, what doesn't work. And honestly, I hope that I'm not sitting here this time next year. I hope it is like, you know, I hope that we can kind of catalyze something and then it takes a very proud life on its own, you know, awesome. um, very organic too. And I think, I think uh, people to also talk to our aftercare organizations, oh. um, because all those stories are so great, but um, well, I know what what can Michelle and I do? What what do people like us do for um, this good you know, good cause? Sign up for Light Up Racing, and again, it's been it's been. Uh, How the do you next do that? month we'll start to, the, the the next month we'll really start to ramp up. You know, okay. so sign up, and then we'll send a survey, fill out the survey, send to your you know your your groups, and encourage people to sign up. Yeah, your constituents, um, and then. <laughs> Uh, Vicky comes to Kentucky and, and I also appreciate that like too often, I think our sport feels uh, from the outside, very Kentucky centric, you know, it's yep. like, oh, this happens in Kentucky, but this is not intended to be that way. The, the challenges is more logistics. Um, so yep. hopefully we can utilize zoom, which I know we're all zoomed out, but like, we're going to have in-person presentations, conversations in Kentucky. We're going to do zoom will be recorded and then they'll be distributed. And then we'll keep that, you know, kind of going. Um, yeah, so it's very simple. Cool. And light, then up racing, we, light up for racing.com. Is that the that's place? It is light up racing.com and the hashtag is light up for racing. Okay. Oh, very cool. Awesome. My man, always good Thank to have you. you on. Thank you for, Thank for spreading the good word and we appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you this spring when I'm back in Kentucky. And uh, no, of course, let us know if there's anything else uh, we can do to help, but we appreciate no. you. I appreciate you all. Y'all, you all just really, you bang the drum for all the good of racing and just, uh, it's awesome. So thank you very much. We're trying my man. That's price bell here from uh, mill Ridge and from light up for racing and from Michelle dead poet society, which we I, talked this about. is what I was trying to show yeah. earlier and it which didn't work so now, I show it now. Which, which one do you think? I think, price, I is? think price is like right mm -hmm. here. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. 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 The kind of in the background. Yeah. yeah. You know, oh, the, wait, that's <laughs> Oh captain, my captain. That's the Oh captain scene, right? That's right. That oh, uh, in my school, it was co-ed and we didn't have to wear uniforms. So that was like a key difference there. <laughs> that's, that's big. That's big for you. Congratulations. Yeah, that's big for me. All right. Get the heck out of here. Go do some work. Right. Thank you, Price. We Thank you. Oh, wait, before we leave him, Price, yeah. real quick. Yeah. Because I do like my full patrol. What do you think about oh. your first Aloha West babies? Oh, I'm really excited. I'm really yeah. excited. Like, you know. I mean, yes, we all love foals and yes, the dream. I mean, we are in the business of selling dreams, right? And if you don't wake up every day and dream what each foal could become, you wouldn't be in it very long, but I'm really excited. So That's he's awesome. beautiful. And I think the horse has a big shot. And Aloha West himself has become like the most handsome horse. Um, he's really let down a beautiful horse. So anyway, y'all come oh, see him in, uh, in April. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, sure. I'm coming for sure. And Oscar performance is doing He's really well doing too. Good. He's killing it, yeah. right? Very proud I'm of him. A big fan of that horse on the racetrack, and I'm I'm a big fan of the Ammerman. So, wow, they're the uh, best. Good, they're people. the best. You know, uh, but yeah, I mean, Tumba Rumba over the weekend, one for Lynch. Yeah, that was huge. And, uh, the the Hooper. Well, hey there. Oh, hey, that's Spencer. He just What's joins up, our Spencer? pod every once in a while. As he should. What's up, Spence? He's leaving. Um, 
he gets but shot. I mean that race, Tom Roma's race was like why we love racing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. sometimes like you get like when horses throw down and you're like just like this is they're doing this for themselves and we hope that we've nurtured a horse to get to that stage. I mean, when it all comes together, it's the best elixir in the world. So yep, sure is. We'll see it. Love we'll it. see it, Keeneland, my friend. Thanks. Can't wait. Thanks, Thank you all for the opportunity. Thank you, Price, so much. Right. Price right. here on the owner's box. We kicked him out. Michelle, good. Good try with all the graphics. It was really nice. I think we're getting better and better and better. better. No, we're getting I, better. I, we can, I have to, we yeah. Actually, I have to we could actually learn. show, like, I wonder yeah, if you could get my it. Whole, I wanted to do it like this, where, like, instead she of was you big. seeing us. Yeah, where he was big and we were small. Yeah, so it's supposed to be, though, like, I, it's supposed to be who's talking, I felt like. But maybe that's Zoom. Maybe it didn't work. We'll, have to, we'll do some research on that. Oh, hey, well, now we're both giant. What too big, too big. Um, so, okay. so I was going to tell you though, um, oh, now I lost my train of thought. Um, great guest, by the way. Good job. And I Price think, and I, I, think and I'm I so hope happy thing works. Official you know, I, I was asking family. some questions just because I didn't really grasp, like, you know, a lot of times when you're making statements about things, you got to be also be a little careful, you know, mm -hmm. like if something happens at Santa Anita, like first racing is going to respond to that, or we hope they are. So that's why I was kind of a little bit confused on how this thing's going to work, but I think it's just messaging, 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 positive messaging, and education, which Educational. is always yeah. yeah, yeah. So good job, okay. good job. Thanks. Um, what do we got coming I've got, up? Well, I've got wait, I've got some more like kind of just things for us to chat about. I know, okay. like, we did, oh, is it okay? It's only been like fifty six minutes, so it'll be the longest show ever. But go ahead, no one cares. Okay. Yeah. Um. So. We all know Churchill kind of like kicked out Bob for another, oh, right? Yeah, you know, indeterminate amount of time. Yeah. Um, no owners opted to move their horses to a different trainer by this week in order to like be thirty point eligible. I right? Like I I like yeah. it too. I like it. They don't care, you know. And and no. you know, listen, this was a bad situation. I don't. Th I think Bob, if you know, if if you had a lie detector desk, he'd say he probably didn't handle it great. Um, but he stood his ground and he cared about, you know, his legacy and his reputation. And he believed something Churchill mm -hmm. down. They have every right to do what they did. But like at some point now, Bob has dropped the lawsuit. That's done. I think a Churchill needs to wake up because truth be told for, for insiders. Now the rest of the world who watches the Kentucky Derby and bets on it that day, they don't give a shit that Bob Baffert's horses aren't there. Right. But you're talking mm -hmm. about. Nisos and Winstock and and uh, the 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 oh, uh, Maymu Maymu and all these horses that are like if they're not in the Derby and it looks like they won't be in the Derby, is it really the Kentucky Derby? I mean, for us that are in, I'll, it, I'm not going to put an asterisk by it, but it's kind of sucks. Yeah, I got to be honest. I hope. I hope. Here's my hope. I hope that something happens that cooler heads prevail and that somehow Churchill says, you know what, Bob, we appreciate what you've done. We've seen what the owners have done. We're, we're, you've, you've served your time. Let's fucking go. That's what I hope. But okay. I don't think so. um, that's mine. Speaking, that's just now, me talking. How yeah, do you feel? I, I, well, I mean, I, I feel the same way. I think that what he served his time and transferred horses when he had to and everything. And now it was supposed to be, it's like you, you you went to jail and you did all of your jail time. And then on your day that you're supposed to be let out, they're like, never mind. You got to stay in. Well, how much? Yeah. I don't know. Just for well, now. Man, yeah, it's. I think it's it not fair. It's not a good. It's not a good look. You know, it's just not a good look. At the, and we have so many. We have so many issues in our in our sport as it is to have this is just. And, and that's what people are going to talk about. Like why? Yeah. They're just giving Bob more attention. Right. Right, because mm -hmm. that's I guarantee you, Derby. By the way, I couldn't even name one other horse than Bob's horses on the Derby Trail right now. I don't think. And fierceness. I'm, fierceness. Okay, fierceness. Yeah, he won the British Cup. Name. Okay, who's running in the the Southwest? Oh, there's like 27 horses in yeah. the Southwest. Who's in it? I was gonna. I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> exactly. is Bob running a, Bob's running a horse in the and, Southwest. And this is our job. Oh, Phil Mott has that horse. I like though. Resilient. He's yeah, running in the okay. Southwest. This is our job. All right. What else I mean, are we going to talk about? Good okay, topic. So yeah, the, the Derby Trail is is underway this weekend. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With with the Holy Bull and the Bob Lewis yep. Southwest coming up. 
Um, okay, I thought this was really cool. This is my last thing. Okay. Um, we all know how amazing Justify was as a sire last year, mm -hmm. especially. Uh, yep. Coolmore is actually doing four breeds that they're giving away to oh. Justify. So okay. if you bred to Corniche, to Epicenter, to Jack Christopher, or to Tis the Law, or your breeding team this year, every mare you breed, basically your name gets put into a hat, and they are going to breed or they're going to grab one name from each stallion's oh, pool cool. and give you a nomination to justify. Very cool. How cool very is cool. that? That's very cool. I think that's neat. Yeah. Um, and just for full patrol, first fulls to Bayid, Mystic Guide, Happy Saver, Speakers Corner, Modonigal, and Keep Me in Mind. I like Bayid. I love Bayid. Love yeah. Bayid. He was All right, what's, uh, don't we have to give Stella. Santa Anita a quick plug? Yes. So Santa Anita, like Pretty I mentioned, rough. we do have the Bob Lewis coming up. That is this Saturday. Um, and we are actually going to be moving first post a little bit early because we're going to have a 10 race card on Saturday. So right. first post 1215 for Saturday rather than 1230. Good so keep know. that in mind. Um, we're also going to be having the coast to coast pick five of the all turf pick three. Um, we're going to be having, I don't know, we're having on track actually, but 10 of 10 recommend coming by if you're in the neighborhood. <laughs> what about free admission Fridays? You know what? I do we still do We're free admission Fridays? I'm so glad it says right here on my little notes free admission Fridays. Free admission Fridays. Oh, yeah. Friday, Every Grace Friday, fan free admission, free admission parking. parking. $3 beers and $5 margaritas. I like I like $3 beers. I like it. Uh so yes, recommend coming out. We have racing Friday, Saturday. And Sunday, and of course, that Bob Lewis uh, Stakes Day, a big day on Saturday. There's also the Thunder Road that day, which I think should be yeah. a pretty good race. Really and good race. yeah, there's the uh, the Closing Remarks race. What is it? The, the megahertz? megahertz? The Megahertz. The megahertz. Um, good day of racing at San Diego on Saturday. Let's yeah, hope no rain. Racing. The rain is done. I mean, it's not raining it anymore. Like, at well, hold on. I live a mile from San Anita. Okay, hold on, everybody. This is going to be okay. very critical. Well, I mean, we are shooting this on what day is this? We're Thursday, it's Thursday right now. It's done raining right now. Michelle, you are a treat. Thank you to Price Bell. Thank you to all our sponsors. We are part of the In the Money Media Network, and we will hopefully do another fun filled hour long show next week. Michelle, 101, baby. Bye.